The appeal of game consoles has always been first and foremost, the games. In the early days of console gaming, you'd pop in a cartridge and almost instantly be playing the game. Some consoles had cute startups and such to add some personality to the console, or just to have as a backup if you didn't have a game in. However, as game consoles grew and developed into what we knew them as now, more features and more functions became the standard with every new console that released. Some of these features would be playing media such as CD or DVDs, being able to change the date or time, or even much later, being able to go online and use services such as internet channels and virtual stores. Of course, there needed to be something to tie this all together, and thus was born the Game Console OS, or Operating System, or in simpler terms, a menu. But it can also go by UI or User Interface, lots of names. What everyone remembers typically isn't just the actual functions of the menu, but mainly the aesthetics and music that brought everything together. The fourth generation of consoles was the last one where almost every competitor was still using cartridges. And I know I'm getting older, and by now there may be kids or younger teens who watch these videos and don't understand what a cartridge is, so I will explain that a cartridge is, right off of Wikipedia, a removable memory card containing ROM designed to be connected to a consumer electronics device such as a home computer or video game console. In other words, not a CD or DVD, and it took up more physical space. It was f***ing crazy. So when game consoles started using CDs to hold the games, naturally it led to more features, such as listening to music CDs, which often required its own menu in itself. So naturally, one of the first instances of user interface being in a mainline gaming console was one of the first CD-based consoles, the Sega Saturn. This only would show up when there wasn't a game in, so not the first menu that appeared on startup and technically more of a CD player menu, but still interesting to note nonetheless. I guess there's not a lot to say about this one. It definitely does look like a product of its time though. It's your basic CD player, but it does have a lot of options, such as changing the pitch of the audio or muting it. And if you really wanted to go 90s, you could hide the menu and see this radical space sequence. It did have functions that were kind of hidden, such as a clock and languages. Uh, now this looks bad in 2020, of course, but at the time, I think this is pretty radical. In the same generation was the PlayStation, which had a menu that was... Uh, not... Yeah, not good. I don't think this one is as interesting. It's really blocky, and I don't think this looks the best, even for its time. Don't get me wrong, the Saturns didn't age that well, but I still think it had a more charm and more personality than this. Even the CD player looked kind of underwhelming. Again, the menus didn't look amazing, and this is a product of its time for sure, but I do think the Saturns looked better. Like, okay, the Saturn had astronauts just flying in space, so they, they, they wouldn't. From the same generation, funnily enough, the CDI also had a menu, but just like the console, there's nothing to say about it. I mean, come on, this is, this is, this is a disgrace. I don't even know why I mentioned this. So yeah, early video game consoles were a bit of a mixed bag, but they were okay for their time. As always, Nintendo was just kind of in their own world and the N64 didn't have any menus, which makes sense when you realize it's still a cartridge-based system. However, they did release an N64 disk drive add-on only in Japan, and it still didn't have a menu, just Mario was swimming with an N64 logo, uh, but this still isn't a menu, so I don't even, I don't even know what I'm talking about this, let's just move on. Meanwhile, on the side of handheld consoles, there were virtually no menus at this point, until one titan came along and innovated. That's right, you know the console, the greatest console of all time, developed by the best publishers ever, not Nintendo, not Sega, not the goddamn Atari Lynx, we're talking about the Tiger Gamecom. This menu was controlled with a touchscreen with a stylus, which was actually really innovative for its time. It had options for cartridge, which was the game, a phone book where you could save numbers, and a calendar if you wanted to use this as a PDA, a calculator, and a built-in solitaire game. Also, you could connect it to the internet. I wonder if one person on the face of the planet unironically has ever used this feature. But for what it was on 1997 hardware, it's actually pretty awesome. And I'd say in a way this inspired the DS, so don't crap on this console too much. Only crap on it the appropriate amount. All right, time for what I know best, the sixth generation of game consoles. The Sega Dreamcast was Sega's last console, of course, and I think they nailed the design of their last OS really well. No, don't get me wrong, this is also definitely a product of its time as well, and there isn't a lot to talk about, but I do think it's a fairly cozy menu. Nothing insane, like I said, you're pretty standard menu, but I think it was good for its time. One thing that does suck about some of these consoles that tell time is that every time you unplug them, you do have to re-enter the time, which if you're anything like me, you're moving stuff around often and have to set the time again every time you set it up, or heck, if you use a power search and turn off your consoles, you have to redo it. It couldn't really be avoided, but I did think it was interesting enough to point out. This is the console I remember it with the most from my own personal experience. 
The PS2, of course, was after, and this has to be one of the most nostalgic menus of all time when you consider how damn popular this console was. This console was the first to play DVDs, which was huge at its time. I think this menu looks way better than the blocky PlayStation 1 OS. The memory card section looked really unique too. This has to be one of the things I remember the most. Again, not a lot to say about this, but I can't leave out the impact of the PS2 menu, since I do think this has to be one of the most iconic of all time. I do apologize for the section of this video not being that interesting, but the menus during the sixth generation were overall the same, and not a lot of innovation was going on here. GameCube was more or less the same thing, calendar, memory card, but I do need to say, while this may just be heavy nostalgia. My god, I love how this menu looks with its dark atmosphere. It's the perfect menu you want to see in the middle of the night starting a gaming session. But again, not much to say about the menu, but I couldn't leave out the GameCube. And then there came along the big man on campus, Microsoft's Xbox. And let's just say this console shook things up big time. I mean, look at this, neon green everywhere, but it works really well. This, I would say, was the very start of modern game console UIs, and deserves many points for innovation. Don't get me wrong, this doesn't look visually like something you would see in the current age, but here's where some of the modern menu choosing is more or less introduced. There is no longer memory card menus and hardware storage in general, since the Xbox contains so much space with its hard drive. It had auto turnoffs to conserve power, and of course, internet options to connect to Xbox Live. It also enhanced upon previous menu options of previous consoles. The CD menu, for example, you could save tracks straight to your hardware, which I thought was super innovative. It even could be used in games like GTA, as you could listen to your tracks you downloaded within the actual game. This menu had a decent amount of options for DVDs, such as parental controls, although it is important to note that the Xbox cannot play DVDs without an add-on. Microsoft kickstarted the next generation off with the Xbox 360, and I have to say this menu is getting to a point where I possibly cannot talk about every nook and cranny, since this is when gaming interfaces really took off and became more PC-like. The internet was almost a necessity during this era, and therefore tons of apps, virtual stores, and what we all see today are just commonplace now. It's interesting to note that this console had multiple menu interfaces due to this being online, and meaning that updating was super easy for Microsoft to do. I will say, this is when I personally remember menus starting to become more annoying and intrusive. Constant updates and issues also came up if you didn't have internet access. Just to wrap up the whole Microsoft thing, the Xbox One, which came out in 2013, wasn't received too much more favorably. The menu was pretty similar, it looked cleaner, and in the beginning, took a lot of aspects of Windows 8, which was annoying, but again, it got updated pretty easily. Nintendo with the Wii actually developed a pretty nice menu and UI for it. The console is based around its Wiimo controller, and thus the menu had you point at it and choose a channel like you were going to watch TV. I love this aesthetic and idea, however, if you don't have a Wii mode and sensor bar, it does restrict you from accessing a channel, and sometimes when I'm feeling lazy, I don't want to raise my arm up after a long day or find batteries or anything. Uh, the console does support GameCube controllers, so I do wish they allowed you to just navigate the menu with this, although you can use the less popular Wii Classic controller to navigate, but it's not as commonly found. I cannot understate the impact that this menu had on many people's childhoods. It's ripe for nostalgia, and some of the themes that were used in the menus became classics. The Wii even had apps such as a weather channel and news channel, which were, believe it or not, pretty big for 2006, an in-depth avatar creator, and even stuff like a voting channel. It even had an internet browser built in in the later part of the console, which was pretty terrible, but novel for its time. I really do have so much respect for what Nintendo added to the Wii interface, as I felt like it did enrich my childhood and set the path for lots of future gaming menus to be. Then the Wii U came along. Okay, this menu wasn't that bad, but it's basically a clone of the Wii menu, but looks tackier and is really weird to navigate. Some menus, specific of the menu you update on, require the gamepad tablet, which is annoying since the tablet ran out of battery and died often, meaning you'd have to bust out your charger just to charge it to choose an update. Other than that, it didn't have a lot to say about it, besides that you can make folders to store your games, and you could do video chat with the gamepad. Did anyone actually do that? I don't know. I guess it wasn't the worst thing ever, though. Then the Nintendo Switch came along. Okay, this menu sucks. It's devoid of any personality or care and actually removes features that are standard in 2020. Game consoles don't need to have an internet browser or things like that, but this doesn't even have backgrounds or folders. I do enjoy minimalism, but this feels too simple. There's not a lot to say about it. It's not bad, it's functional, but feels like a step back, even when you compare it to their handheld consoles, such as a 3DS and even DSi, which still contain a lot of personality and backgrounds and folders. And specifically, the 3DS actually took and improved upon the Wii's menus in a lot of ways. Lots of us have been waiting for an OS update since 2017, but unfortunately nothing has come along this way. 
It's not the worst and gets the job done, but it's definitely not Nintendo. On the PlayStation side of things, they took this X and Y graph approach for a while, which I did like actually. There were nice backgrounds and music could be played to complement it. I also did like how this was the standard for handhelds and PS3 at the same time, which brought unity to the Sony brand. I don't want to skim over these, but it is difficult to talk about some of these modern gaming venues when there are just so many features, so I do apologize for some of the scarcity in the second half of this video. But this video is more about the aesthetics and innovation of gaming venues and what they grew to be. And I have no doubt that they will continue to evolve in future console iterations as consoles become more and more PC-like, as we've seen over the past decade. Anyways. I am Jeff Compass. Leave a comment if you like this type of video. I don't do these all the time anymore, so let me know if you'd like to see more of these, because I could definitely do it. And be on the lookout for multiple shovelware and Jeff Compass videos in the works soon. Thank you for watching.